if you think about writing, if you think about your act of writing, creating something new, it might seem kind of daunting because there have been, there are millions of different stories in the world and there are people creating stories every single day. So if you sit down to write, how do you know that you are going to create something that is unique, that is going to stand out, that is going to be different than what other people have created in the past? And this episode, I'm going to talk about how you really don't have to worry about it. Welcome to How to Write Good. I am your host, Daniel Poppy. You can find out more about me at danielpoppy.com. If it is your first time here, How to Write Good is a writing podcast that seeks to find principles and advice that can be applied across a broad range of writing situations. If you've been here before, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button below, and share. I've seen this phenomenon quite a few times over social media because the times I actually interact with other writers is over social media. Or maybe I could rephrase that. The times I I creep on other writers, I see what other writers are doing, is over social media. The only other... The only other times I see what writers are doing is when I read their books, which I think is a bit different because it isn't the actual process. It's the product that is created from the process, and we call that product the writing itself. But I've seen this a handful of times. I've seen a lot of writers who come up with ideas, and actually I saw a thread of this the other day. I can't remember which social media platform it was on, but one writer said, oh, you know, I was writing a book, and then suddenly I turned on this film. And I was like, oh, no, I'm going to have to uh, rewrite the entire book. Or I was talking to a friend of mine about what my book is about. And then I, my friend is like, oh, that sounds like this movie. And then the person checks out the movie and they find out to their relief that the movie is very different than what they're thinking. And we know that when that happens to any of us, especially when we get to the end of a book, once we finish that final draft, if we run into into something that is very similar, we know what happens, and that is devastation. Because what are you going to do? It's the end of your life. It's the end of your writing career. It's the end of that book because you're going to have to throw it in the trash. I'm being sarcastic and facetious. Uh, I think that you should stop caring. I think that you should stop looking at what other people are doing, and you should stop caring about whether whether something of yours is super similar to another thing. The only reason I would say you should care is if you're actually going to infringe on copyright, and you can infringe on copyright whether or not you intended to infringe on copyright. So uh, if you actually infringe on copyright, I think you should take care of that, or somebody is stealing your ideas. That is a different circumstance. But if you are writing a story and you like the story and you are trying to uh, write the best story you can and you end up seeing a story that is similar to yours, I think you should stop worrying. I think you should stop caring. But I think that you need to actually I think that you need to actually take a different perspective on writing before you start to do that, because I think most people approach writing in the wrong way. So before I get to what approach I think you should take instead of worrying that you're repeating something else someone has done. I just want to give you a word of encouragement. I want to tell you something that will actually make you feel a lot better, okay? Everything has been done before. Everything has been done before. We're all pulling from someone else's ideas, right? You probably have a favorite book or favorite book series or favorite film or favorite film series or favorite television series, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Everybody has a favorite thing. Everybody is drawing from a whole bunch of different things. My one thing I would say is that if you think your stuff is derivative, if you think your stuff repeats what has been done in the past too much, I would encourage you to read more. Not just fiction, but broadly. Read broadly, have broad experiences, because it may be the case you just don't have enough experiences to draw from, and so your stuff becomes derivative. But I just want to encourage you. Everything has been done before, so stop worrying. 
One thing you learn if you study Shakespeare, who is seen as one of the best playwrights in the history of the English language, and there is a lot of merit in Shakespeare. He is very good with language. He's very good with words. He makes very complex stories, but what most people don't realize is he stole his stories. He was not, I would say that he was not a storyteller at heart. He was not coming up with brand new ideas. He was taking other people's ideas. In most cases, he was fitting them to his purposes. He was rewriting those stories as plays. He was rewriting those plays and he was presenting them to people in a way that was better. Okay. So Shakespeare in some ways was a plagiarist, right? Not really because he rewrote everything, but he took other people's ideas, and I think that it is very good to have this attitude that if you see an idea you like, you are allowed to take it and use it. And that's certainly what he did. He would essentially copy a play, right? He would copy how a play uh, plays out. He would copy how the story goes in a very similar fashion in a lot of his stories. I don't think it's every single one, but a lot of his stories he did this. So if he was doing that and he was bringing about very good, a very good end result, maybe it's better if you don't worry about whether you're copying something, right? I'm not saying you should go out and try to find, to find something to copy as he was, but I'm saying maybe you shouldn't worry if you find that someone else's movie or book is similar to what you're doing, unless it does verge on plagiarism. But I think you need to change your mindset to writing. And I think if you do change your mindset toward writing and toward storytelling and toward developing ideas, then I think you will actually have this happen less. So why does this happen to people? Why does this happen where people go in and they, they have the story? They're like, oh, this is a great idea. I love this idea. And then they find a story and they're, they're like, oh, no, man, that stinks. This is the worst. I, I, this is just I, this has been done before. What I've seen time and time again is everyone is looking for the thing that will break the internet or break the writing world or break the literary world. They're looking for ideas that are that have never been done before. They're like, oh, you know, what if we had this? Um, what if we had Abraham Lincoln? And he was a vampire hunter. You know, that has been done. And the reason why that was done is because nobody else did it. I would say it's similar to keyword stuffing in SEO. So if you ever deal with any SEO, which you might run into, when you deal with SEO, uh, you try to get as many keywords connected to what you're writing so that it pops up on search engines, right? You have to, you have to optimize the keywords, you have to optimize how they're used, you have to optimize where they are in the text and the title, etc. And what you can do is you can actually be like, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a strategic approach to this. And instead of having a few different keywords, I'm gonna use all these different keywords. And then if I use all these different keywords, they'll show up more so more people will see them. And I think what happens to a lot of writers, uh, especially when they're younger, is that they do this thing that's similar to keyword stuffing. They actually they try to reach out for an idea. They try to reach out and they try to find the most original idea possible. They are like, man, this is the, nobody else has thought about this. When in reality, somebody probably has, right? Um, there are 7 billion plus people on the planet. And if you thought of an idea, it is likely someone has thought of it before. I think it's very likely someone's thought of it before. So I think that instead of, trying to find that best idea, trying to find that idea that will break the internet, trying to find that uh, that conglomeration that, uh, I can't remember the exact word, that combination, that's what I mean, that combination of different ideas that you can bring together to create something extremely unique, I think that you need to look at life and find those things that are important and find find those things that move you right? Uh, find those things in your life. Find those stories that you want to tell that aren't just that aren't just combinations of things that aren't made up out of whole cloth that are actually connecting to you, connecting to you emotionally, something that you want to read, right? Think about all the books you've loved throughout your life. They are books that aren't, they don't just have ideas that are unique. They are books that have heart to them, they are books that have great characters. They are books that write characters well that make you connect to characters and make you fall in love with those characters. And the extra things, the things that make the book unique that are like the little bits and pieces or the premise or whatever it is, those things are important. 
but the core, the characters, are more important than those things. And if you don't have that core, then you, then those extra things aren't going to matter. Instead of just instead of worrying about originality, originality, excuse me, I'd just to I just like to encourage you to write, write like crazy because writing more will get more of your work out and some of your work might be horrible but you're going to get to a point where you get better and better and better at writing and then you're going to be phenomenal if you enjoyed this podcast and you want to support me there's really one simple thing you can do you can go to danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter and sign up for my newsletter and when you sign up you'll actually be able to get access to my publication roadmap. So that's everything I have planned for pretty much every project I have into the next decade. Again, that is danielpoppy.com forward slash newsletter. You can also find the link below.